Hello and welcome to class. We are studying the cost of capital. The cost of capital. This is our third lesson. We are studying cost of capital. Cost of capital. In our previous lessons, we defined cost of capital as the price that a company pays for obtaining finance to run the operations of the organization. In our last lesson, we discussed the various components of cost of capital, which included, number one, ordinary share capital, ordinary share capital. Number two, the preference share capital and three debt. We defined this specific cost of capital. We looked at illustrations which help us learn how to calculate the cost of ordinary share capital, the cost of preferential capital, and the cost of debt. Today we proceed to discuss the concept of the weighted average cost of capital. Today we want to discuss what we call the weighted average average cost of capital, average cost of capital. The cost of capital is always an average cost because in our previous lesson we calculated the cost of specific sources of capital. But when you talk of cost of capital, is always an average cost, which is also referred to as an overall, overall cost. This is an overall cost, or you may call it composite. Composite, composite cost is an overall cost, is an average cost, because for you to make decisions as far as cost of capital, you need to determine the average cost of these uh, various sources of capital. You need to determine an average because each element, each component has its own cost. Remember in our uh, illustration, we had a different cost, um, different cost of uh, capital for these various sources. But for you to come up with the cost of capital, then it has to be an average cost of capital. And I'm, I've said that this average cost of capital is also referred to as the overall cost or composite cost. And since various capital components have different percentage costs, then it is important to determine a single average cost of capital attributable to various costs of capital. And uh, this is determined on the basis of percentage cost of each capital component. And each category of capital is proportionately weighted. Each category, each element, each component in the capital structure is proportionately weighted. Proportionately weighted. And that is what we are going to learn in this lesson. We are going to learn how to compute the average weighted average cost of capital. Weighted average cost of capital. So we will take an illustration and we'll begin with the, the illustration we did last time in our last lesson. Uh, remember the illustration in regard to Faida Limited. I'll read it 
The following information was extracted from the books of FAIDA Limited as at 31st December 2015. So we have a table comprising the various sources of capital. The first one, ordinary share capital power value 25 shillings. 8% preferential capital power value 24 shillings. 10% preferential capital power value 20 shillings. And 10% debentures. Additional information. The share prices as at 31st December 2015 were as follows. Ordinary shares 30 bob, 8% preference shares 20 bob, 10% preference shares 25 shillings. The market value of the 10% debenture on 31st December 2015 was 500,000. Note number two. The corporation tax rate is 30%. Number three. The company has maintained payment of an ordinary dividend per share of 3.8 shillings over the past five years. Required. One, compute the cost of ordinary share capital, number two, com uh, the cost of 8% preference share capital, number three, cost of 10% preference share capital, number four, cost of 10% debentures. Then lastly, weighted average cost of capital. The weighted average cost of capital. So this question, we had determined the various, the cost of specific sources of capital. Starting with the cost of ordinary share capital, Cost of 8% preference share capital, cost of 10% preference share capital, and cost of 10% debentures. That one we had determined in our last illustration. Today we are looking at the requirement number four. That is the weighted average cost of capital. So how do you determine the weighted average cost of capital weighted average cost of capital now the weighted average cost of capital the weighted average cost of capital the weighted average cost of capital that is the w a c c the weighted average cost of capital is determined using the following formula. It's determined using the following formula. That is KE. And you remember, our KE was the uh, cost of capital. You multiply that with E over V over V plus plus KP. Remember, KP in our last illustration was the abbreviation of cost of preference share. So you multiply that with the P over V plus KD, remember KD was abbreviation for cost of debt times D over V. So these are the weights. Where, where K E is equal to cost of equity. K P the cost of preference shares. K D is equal to cost of preference 
debentures or debt and E, this E is equal to the market value of equity P P is equal to market value of preference shares and E is equal to market value of debt market value of debt that is e p and d then v v v is equal to the total market value of the farm the total market value of the farm which is equal to e plus p plus d all right e plus p plus d is equal to the total market value of the farm because e as you have seen down here is the market value of equity p is the market value of preference shares and d is the market value of debt or debentures right so let's split my work area like that so that is the formula for determining the weighted average market average <coughs> cost of capital the formula for determination of weighted average cost of capital so these are now the weights we say that the cost of capital of a farm the weight uh, is a weighted average the cost of capital is a weighted average is an overall cost which is weighted average and every component every component every element every category within the capital structure is proportionately weighted proportionately weighted so so that is the formula so having identified the formula which is down here formula we can now proceed to work out the weighted average cost of capital in our illustration in our illustration the faida limited illustration now in calculating the weighted average cost of capital the first step the first step is to calculate the cost of capital uh, for the specific sources of capital cost of specific sources of capital so solution we are determining want to determine the weighted average cost of capital step number 1 is to calculate the cost of the specific sources of capital and this we did in our last illustration remember in this question we have one source being the ordinary share capital or let's just call it equity ke the second source is the eight percent preference shares the third one was the 10% preference shares and lastly we had the 
this is the 10% debentures. 10% debentures. And in our illustration, our KE, KE in this illustration we had determined 12.67%. That is KE. Then we have our KP of 8% preference shares. We calculated it to was 9.6%. The 10% preference shares, the after tax cost KP 8%. And lastly, KD, cost of debt. 5.6 percent so the first step first step step number one is to determine the cost of the specific sources of capital then step number two step two step two step two we ought to determine the calculate the market values of the specific sources of capital because remember in the formula, we have the market values of equity, preferentials, and debt. So the second step, an important step, is to determine the market values of the various sources of capital. Then lastly, step number three. Step three is to um, determine, which is the last step, determine the WACC, the weighted average cost of capital, the weighted average cost of capital. So in this illustration, step one, we have accomplished step one. We have the various, uh, the, the, the cost of the specific sources of capital. Cost of equities is 12.67%, 8% uh, preference shares, 9.6%, 10% .6 preference shares, 8%, 10% debentures, 5.6%. So the second step, so we'll now um, move to our second step which is the determination of the market values of the specific sources of capital. Okay? And uh, we can decide to proceed to do that in a table. We can decide to have a table here where we have the sources, one column for sources, of capital, okay, sources of capital, and in this case, um, the sources of capital, uh, we can have it in a table, sources of capital, these are the sources. Then the market values, another column for market values. Market values, for example, the first one is equity. Now, equity, you can see the, the price we've been granted or given the price, market price per share. The market price per share for ordinary share capital is 30 shillings. So what will be the total uh, 
market value for equity what is the total market value for equity we've been given the value market value for one share the market value for one share which is 30 shillings so for us to determine the total market value the total market value for equity then we will need to calculate the number of shares number of shares number of shares then we multiply the number of shares with the market price per share so the market price per share is 30 shillings so the question is what is uh, how do we determine the number of shares so number of shares we simply uh, divide the power value the power value which is 800,000 divide the power value um, the power value by the face value per share okay this is the total power value as given in the table the first table 800 shillings that is the power value and each ordinary share is 25 shillings so divide by 25 shillings this will give us the number of shares then multiply the number of shares with 30 shillings 30 shillings number of shares times market price per share will be equal to the market price market value total market value for equity then you can do the same for preference shares that is eight percent take the first one because there are two categories eight percent preference shares eight percent preference shares the power value for preference shares 600,000 divided by the power value per share that will give us the number of shares then multiply the number of shares with the market price per share which is 20 shillings so 600,000 divide 600,000 by 24 then multiply that because this will give us the number of shares then multiply the number of shares with the market price per share which is uh, 20 shillings we'll arrive at the market value for 8% preference shares then we have of course the 10% preference shares how many what is the value the value is 400,000 400,000 divide with the power value or face value of the 10% preference shares which is 20 shillings multiply that with the market value per share of 25 shillings so with this we have the market values for one two three then of course we had the debentures the debentures the power value for debentures is 500,000 that one we don't need to calculate because it's directly provided the power value then I need to take my calculator and do the mathematics calculator so this is a work of a calculator 800 this 800 thousand divide 25 that is 32,000 shares times 30 960 this is 960 thousand that is the total market value of equity then divide 600,000 600,000 divide by 24 this gives me 25,000 eight percent preference shares times the market value per share times 20 500,000 10 percent preference shares number of shares 400,000 divide 20 
this is 20,000 shares times 25 shillings per share. 25 shillings per share is 500,000. Then of course we had the debentures. The debentures, the value is given in the question and it's at 500,000. So I get the total. This will give me the total. It's 500,000. 500,000 plus 500,000 plus 500,000 plus 960 plus 960,000. This is equal to 2460. 2460,000. Okay. So that is the total market value but let me just write it here the total market value total market values total market values so that is the second stage calculate the market value of the specific sources of capital. So this is, these are the uh, market values of specific sources of capital. Then we can now compute the weight, the weight, the weight, the proportions, the weight, the weight. the weight because you say that every source or every component is proportionately weighted so how do you compute the weight the weight for equity the weight for equity this equity the weight for equity and uh, I want to determine the weight for every source the weight for equity will be equal to 960 divided by the total. 960 divided by this total. That will give us the weight, which is equal to 960 divided 2460. So the weight here is 0 0.39. The second one here. The weight 500 divide 2460. This will be equal to 0 0.2. Okay, 0 0.2. The same here, 0 0.2. Then lastly, 0 0.2. 0 0.2. So weights. Simply take the market value for every component divide with the total that gives you the weight here is 500 divide by 2460 0 0.2 then the first one we saw was 960 divide by 2460 this is 0 0.39 so these are the weights these are the weights Okay, those are the weights. Then um, with that, we can move to the third stage, which is determine the weighted average cost. The weighted average cost. In the weighted average cost, we are going to apply the formula because we have the specific cost. We have the weight because these are the weights. E over V gives us the weight, the way we have done it. P over V gives us the weight for 8% preference shares. All right. Then D over V, that is the market value for uh, debt 
of a total market value will give us the weight. So we can now compute the step three. This is step two. Then step three, we can determine the weighted average cost of capital, which you have seen is equal to E, K, E, E over P plus K, P, P over V plus K, D, D over V. And this should be equal to cost of equity. Our cost of equity here, you can see 12.67. 12.67 times the weight E over P. E over P. E over P, 960 over 2460, which is 0 0.9, 0 0.39, 0 0.39, plus KP. We have two categories of preference shares. The first one is 8% uh, and 10%. So KP, the first KP, cost of uh, preference shares, 9.6%. So 9.6% times the weight of 0 0.2 plus, plus, plus 8%, that is KP, 8% times 0 0.2 plus KD, KD, 5.6%. This is 5.6% times the weight, which is 0 0.2. 0 0.2. So we just add, okay, cost times the proportion plus cost times the proportion time plus cost times the proportion. Cost times the weight, cost times the weight, cost times the weight, we add, we aggregate. So the aggregate will be the cost, weighted average cost of capital. So we add, we can add here 12.67 times 0.39 plus 9.6 times 0.2 plus 8 times 0.2 plus 5.6 times 0.2. So the weighted average cost, the weighted average cost for FAIDA Limited is equal to 9.58. 9.58. Percent, nine point five eight percent is the weighted average cost of FIDA Limited. So with that, that marks the end of that illustration. We have looked at an illustration, the first illustration in learning how to calculate the weighted average cost of capital, which is the overall cost of capital, also known as the composite cost of capital. And we said the cost of capital of a firm is a weighted average because a firm may have many sources of capital. For us to arrive at a single cost of capital, then we need to determine an average. And this average is determined as a percentage, a percentage. Every 
specific cost of capital is proportionately weighted. And that is what we have done. I've given you the formula for weighted average cost of capital, which is equal to KD times the proportion for equity plus KP times the proportion for uh, preference share capital plus KD times the proportion for debt, all right? Where KE is the cost of equity, KP is the cost of preference shares, KD is the cost of debt, all right? And EPD represents the market value of equity, preference shares, and debt respectively. And V is the total market value of the firm, which is equal to the market value for equity plus the market value for preference share capital plus the market value for debt. So we have looked at and solved one illustration. In our next lesson, we will consider another illustration. Thank you very much. Let's meet in our next class. Thank <music> you.